Bienvenidos a este canal, invito rápidamente a suscribirse y activar la campana de notificaciones. Deportan a Ecuador a familiares del prófugo capo del narco Fito. Su esposa e hijos fueron apresados en la provincia de Córdoba, pero hay informes contradictorios sobre su liberación después de ocho horas en base militar. No olvide dejar un comentario en este video y un me gusta también para apoyarnos. Muchísimas gracias. La esposa y tres hijos del jefe narco ecuatoriano Adolfo Macías, alias Fito, fugado recientemente de una prisión en Guayaquil, llegaron a Ecuador este viernes tras ser detenidos y expulsados de Argentina. La aeronave en la que viajaban aterrizó en la base aérea militar Simón Bolívar, en la ciudad portuaria de Guayaquil, constató un periodista de la AFP. Soldados armados con fusiles y de rostro cubierto custodiaban las afueras del aeropuerto. Los militares de Fito, líder de la mayor banda narco de Ecuador, conocida como Los Choneros, y cuya fuga desató una ola de violencia, fueron apresados en la provincia de Córdoba, dijo en conferencia de prensa la ministra de Seguridad Argentina. La esposa de Macías y tres de sus hijos, junto a otros integrantes de su clan, se habían instalado en un barrio privado en Córdoba el 5 de enero, tres días antes de que se conociera la sonada fuga de Macías, explicó la ministra. Los expulsados son la esposa de Macías, de 48 años, junto a su hija Michelle, de 21, y sus hermanos de 12 y 4. ¿Qué opina de esta información? Nuevamente los invito a suscribirse. Gracias por estar acá. Noticias al día. And welcome to the program, Mr. President. Um, can I just start by asking you a very simple question? You have declared war on gangs. We've just described how very much power they have. Are you confident that you are in control of your country? Hello, thank you for having me here. Uh, first, I've declared war on terrorists. Uh, these are not conventional gangs. They are terrorist groups. They are uh, highly organized, structured, armed forces that terrorize uh, complete regions and have had control in the past few years of our nation's prisons. I'm confident that we can win this war. I'm confident that we can Uh, restore peace and restore uh, stability in a country that has all, that has natural resources, that has a stable uh, dollarized economy, and that we can provide employment and attract investment in the near future. And just to say we have a, a slight delay, so our, our viewers will, will understand that, long distance and all the rest of it. Um, but how much of an issue is it for you in your fight, you call it terrorism, uh, others have called it, you know, fight against drug cartels, that the, the main perpetrator, this guy who's nicknamed Fito, appears to be still at large, and there are a certain, you know, 43 prisoners remaining at large after the crackdown. The fact of those people being at large. How difficult does that make your current operation? Uh, we are working uh, in an orderly manner. Uh, we have freed 170 hostages and we have restored stability in the prisons right now. We have one leader at large. We have another one which is uh, Colompico at large and the rest we're tracking them down. Right now, the army and the police are working together, and the whole nation is united uh, to actually eliminate this threat. People want peace. People want to be able to walk uh, freely on the street, to have their own uh, business, to have uh, stability so that their kids can go to parks, can go to school, can go also uh, to the university, the older kids. And I believe that our operation is being successful at the moment. We are pr having uh, progress, and I'm sure that we will have a full victory at the end. I mean, you really do talk in war terms, victory, and militarization, the war, etc. So um, can, can you, what is your example, what is your sort of I guess, plan. We know that there is a similar and there has been a similar um, war on, on gangs, war on, as they call it, terror or drugs in El Salvador. Is, is that your example for how to continue and how to wage this fight? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, first, there's two different nations, two different realities, culturally, economically. Uh, secondly, I 
believe and something that I've talked since the campaign that we need to take control of the country. We have over 30,000 members of these uh, narco-terrorist groups that are threatening the whole population. So we're militarizing the ports, we're protecting our borders, we're reestablishing control in our prisons, and at the same time, with intelligence, with the CS, with military intelligence, we're working on breaking the cycle and breaking the chain of financing also for these narco-terrorist groups. Uh, just to it's pick the, up it's on... It's a different mm -hmm. reality, it's a different situation. Right, but the thing is... And I do believe uh, that... Yeah? I do believe in democracy. I do believe in, uh, in a country being united. I've requested, without the obligation, the support of the parliament, which in an unanimous way supported uh, my decree. I've asked also the court to give us their opinion. They're supporting our, uh, our fight. So we are respecting the, difference, the different uh, powers of the state. And in a democratic way, we are fighting for peace. We're fighting for progress. I, you know, I ask you because many in El Salvador see their, you know, their, their method has been successful. They can now go back outside, eating at restaurants, walking around on the street. Even though it's a very brutal crackdown, um, it's effectively destroyed the gang problem there. Do you think you might ever be tempted to, to do that if you're having difficulty doing it the way you're doing now? I believe in the Ecuadorian way and I believe in, in the Noboa way. So I think that uh, we have our own style, we have our own way of, of governing in a democratic way, and we need to reestablish peace. And the moment that the people uh, just wish for me not to be here, I will gladly uh, leave and go back to my family, go back to my businesses. Let me ask you about the U.S. Obviously, the United States is, is an ally. It sent some uh, top officials, uh, both from the military and from the State Department. And I'm wondering what you're hoping to, to get from them, what kind of aid you need. And most specifically, do you plan to reopen a DEA base like there was in previous Ecuadorian governments uh, to deal with these problems? It's unconstitutional uh, to do so. We cannot have foreign bases in Ecuador according to our new constitution from 2008, but we can work together. We can have cooperation. We can have uh, the DA work with the CS, work with the anti-narcotics police here, and help us uh, fight against these uh, terrorist groups, which are, have a lot of money, have a lot of resources, have a lot of guns. So we need... Uh, we need international cooperation. I would gladly accept uh, cooperation from the U.S. We need equipment, we need weapons, we need intelligence, and uh, I think that this is a global problem. It's not only in Ecuador. This is a problem that you know, goes beyond borders. About 35, 40 percent of the drugs that come out of Ecuador go to the States, another mm -hmm. similar percentage to Europe. So this has to be treated as an international problem. Well, explain then to our viewers a little bit, because your country does not produce the kind of drugs that are in question, does not produce cocaine, and yet you, your country has become implicated. Is that because of the surrounding countries? We know there's a, a big problem in a state of emergency in parts of Peru. Uh, you know, Colombia obviously has had a major drug producing part of the economy there. Mexican cartels appear to be helping the Ecuadorian gun, uh, gangs and cartels. Explain why Ecuador became caught in this. Si no te quieres perder de los últimos acontecimientos que pasan en el mundo, suscríbete y activa la campana. Somos Noticias al Día.